Join us now for a moment of faith with Dr. Joe Arthur, pastor of the Harvest Baptist Tabernacle in Jonesboro, Georgia. This is an internet broadcast that will air daily at 12.30 p.m. and will remain on our Harvest Facebook page for you to view at any time. This broadcast is to uplift God's children and to remind us all that faith is a victory that overcometh the world. Now here's our pastor with a moment of faith, Dr. Joe Arthur. And greetings today to all of our friends. Thank you for joining us for our daily program where we take a few moments out of the day to set our affection on Jesus Christ, the Arthur and the finisher of our faith. I'm glad today that faith honors God, God honors faith, for the just shall live by faith. And I'm anxious today to see what God is going to do in your life and mine in a moment of faith. This week we've been calling our program also a moment of praise a moment of praise and adoration of the King of kings and Lord of lords. We've been using Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 19 as our text, where Paul said under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart unto the Lord. We've been looking at the book of Ephesians. To me, it is one gigantic anthem of praise and adoration to our Lord Jesus Christ. Six chapters, six powerful stanzas that glorify and magnify the great things that God has done in our life. Each chapter reminds me of a song or a hymn that has blessed the hearts of the people of God down through the years. Chapter one, I'm reminded of that great Jerry Goff song, I'm Blessed. Or in chapter one, we are reminded that we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings. Chapter two reminds me of that great hymn of the church, Amazing Grace. For in chapter number two, we are reminded for by grace are you saved through faith. Chapter three reminds me of the wonderful song we began singing in Sunday school as little children. Jesus loves me, this I know. For in chapter three, Paul tells us that through the Holy Spirit, we ought to be able to comprehend what is the length and the breadth and the depth and the height of the love of Christ. Yesterday at our gathering, we looked at chapter number four, where it reminds us of that great spiritual song, Just a Closer Walk with Thee, where we are commanded to walk as a children, as the children of God, walking with the King, fellowshipping with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to come to chapter number five today. And don't laugh when I say this, but the song Chapter 5 reminds me of is, here comes the bride. You said that's not a spiritual song. Well, it may not be a spiritual song or a gospel song, but it's been sang in church almost as much as Amazing Grace. Every wedding, we hear that great anthem, here comes the bride. Well, in chapter number 5 of the book of Ephesians, we get a glimpse of God's glorious church. In fact, the day I'm preaching out of one of my mother and one of my father's Bible. Mom had this large print Bible. Then daddy had to use it as his vision began to fade. But I'm looking right here in this scripture. Ephesians 5 and verse number 27. Mom has written down in the margin, J.B. preached on 7-25-82, August, uh, uh, July the 25th, 1982, on God's glorious church. When I saw that a while ago, I told Brother Chris, that blessed me. And I'm glad that God does have 
a glorious church, the bride of Christ, the church of the firstborn, the church, the ransom, the redeemed body of Christ. In fact, the book of Ephesians paints a wonderful picture of the church and its relationship to Jesus Christ. Ephesians talks about the church as being a building. It talks about the church being a body. It talks about the church being a battalion. And it talks about the church being a bride. I love the way Andrew Telford put it in his exposition on the book of Ephesians. He said, the church is a body that cannot be diseased. It is a building that cannot be destroyed. It is a bride that cannot be divorced. It is a battalion that cannot be defeated. I'm glad I'm a member of the blood-washed church of the living God. And Ephesians chapter number five gives us the glorious future of the bride of Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad that Jesus Christ the heavenly groom, I'm glad that he pursued his bride. I'm glad he came looking for you. I'm glad he came looking for me. For the Bible says that the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Boy, I love that passage in the book of Genesis chapter 24 when the elder servant Eliezer, a type of the Holy Spirit, went down by the well to find a bride for Isaac. Oh, I'm glad one day God's elder servant, the Holy Spirit, came with the word of God and pursued me. I'm glad the Lord Jesus pursued his bride. I'm glad today the Lord Jesus Christ, our heavenly bridegroom, he purchased his bride. All oh, the Bible said that he purchased the church of the living God with his own blood. Several, several years ago, I was at a Bible conference and a big name preacher was man waxing eloquent. I think he waxed elephant a time or two, but he was waxing eloquent, telling us about all of the high standards that he had in his church. And I think that's wonderful. But he made this statement and I couldn't help but laugh, and I think I laughed out loud. He said, I don't allow any of the young men in our church to marry young ladies out of our church unless they have over $10,000 in cash in savings. That's a good idea. That's a good goal. But I'll tell you, there'd be a lot of single people left in this country. But what he's referring to in the Old Testament, the man had to give the father a purchase price for the bride. Oh, I'm glad Jesus Christ pursued his bride. And I'm glad that he purchased his bride. I'm glad Jesus Christ, the heavenly bridegroom, protects his bride. I'm glad he loves his bride. He never leaves, never forsakes. His bride will never, will never get a dear Jesus letter that I'm gone. I'm glad the one that pursued the bride, the one that purchased the bride, is the one that protects the bride. Let me say today, Jesus Christ, the heavenly bridegroom, is perfecting his bride. The Bible says right here in our text that he is washing the bride, regenerating the bride, refreshing the bride, renewing the bride through the water of the word. It's the day-by-day -day process of positional, personal, and practical sanctification. And as we live close to the Lord, he purifies and perfects his bride. All oh, but the verse that my dad preached from, that my mom has circled in this Bible, I'm glad the one that pursued the bride and purchased the bride and protects the bride and is uh, perfecting the bride. One day we'll present the bride. And it says in chapter 5 and verse number 27 that he might present it to himself, 
a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be blameless and holy. Aren't you glad one day the church will be presented on dress display as the bride of Jesus Christ? Boy, in the fairy tales, they say that Cinderella and the king lived happily ever after. They say the beauty and the beast lived happily ever after. Oh, but that's not true. And down here in this life, there is the parting of sunder at the grave. But I'm glad when it comes to Christ and his church, we'll live happily ever after. I'm glad we can sing a song of praise of being in the body and the bride of Jesus Christ. I've enjoyed our time together this week, and I'm looking forward to next week when we'll see what God can do in a moment of faith.